Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what a glorious Thursday it is, and it's time to discuss how to learn some StarCraft. Today's topic is going to be Protoss openings in the Protoss vs. Terran matchup. Last week, we looked at the TVP core strategy about how the real struggle is Protoss trying to expand as much as possible, tech to Arbiters as soon as possible, while trying to time a big explosion of gateways to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Terran's big goal, which is to do a scary mega death push. And Terrans, of course, have the, uh, well, I, I prefer playing Protoss, honestly. So, you know what? Terrans have the despicable ultra power of 3-3 three, three upgrades, tanks, and mines at a 200-200 army that is very, very scary to deal with. So, Protoss's general technique in the game is to expand a lot, get a lot of gateways, and then do lots of counterattacking and expansion denial with large armies, with fast mobile units like Zealots and Dragoons, and use Arbiters to slip in there as the game goes on. Terran, of course, is trying to deny all this and to make uh, the most out of big, well-timed pushes. Uh, we got the chance to talk about Terran openings, and you watched me play through a lot of them. I'm going to do something even smarter today and show you videos of me doing Protoss openings, so that way we can look at some of the ways that Protosses can get started, can get off the ground, and flow into those acceptable mid-games. And we're going to look at one of the safest, it's still not a very modern opening, this is more of a classical opening for Protoss, like the safest opening possible. And we'll go through it pretty slowly through here. Uh, also, this particular episode shouldn't be too terribly long, given the fact that... Whoops. I want to go over here. Given the fact that um, we're going to be able to watch these at 2x speed. But um, after this, we're going to be reviewing Terran vs. Protoss cheeses in the matchup. Because in all of these openings, probably what you've been seeing consistently, is that I am not talking about things like building two barracks and sending marines rallying a man to attack early or ultra fast dark templar all ins anything like that i'm not looking to talk to you about how to end the game early i want to talk about openings that could end the game early but more importantly have a step into the mid game a step into the late game that can follow that up it's very important that you acknowledge Every opening needs to flow into that convergent mid-game. That was a big thing that we talked about in pretty much every strategy video and talked quite a bit about last week in Terran vs. Protoss. So the opening that we're going to see right now is going to address all the problems that Protoss has in a really blunt way. Wow, that music cuts off real abruptly, doesn't it? What are those problems? Think, what are the real problems that Protoss would need to get to a mid-game where Protoss is trying to expand a whole bunch, where Protoss is trying to uh, find out what the Terran's doing to decide when it's time to build a bunch of gateways, when it's time to expand even more, when it's time to expand, uh, or excuse me, when it's time to go for Arbiters. What are the big things? Well, it's pretty straightforward, honestly. Protoss needs to deal with mines. Protoss needs to deal with any attacks that come in early. And maybe mess with the Terran a little bit. That's it. That's really all that's going on. And one of the reasons why I started with Terran vs. Protoss in this series is that Terrans really, or excuse me, Protosses really just need Dragoons early on. We will see some openings that get Zealots, but remember, there's no good use for Zealots when they don't have speed. There's okay uses for them, but there's not amazing uses for them. So everything you've seen here is a very common look to any Protoss opening. A gateway, just one, followed by a gas geyser, followed by a cybernetics core, and building pylons and probes as need be. Why? Because marines suck without medics and stem, and in general they suck in this matchup, so we're not even really worried about getting attacked early, so we don't need zealots, we don't need any of these sorts of things. A Dragoon gets started right away, just beginning our Dragoon production right from the get-go. Very common in any opening. And l let me just note, I am talking about openings, not specific build orders. Sometimes you'll hear me say, oh yeah, you, you, you know, build this Dragoon at 17 supply, which brings you to 19 supply. We're looking at more of the conceptual of what's going on, and as you'll play, you'll get more specific build orders. Are you guys not hearing the game sound? Should be able to hear it. When it's unpaused, at least. So, in this ultra, ultra, super, unbelievably safe opening, 
Yeah. What ProDOSes do is they get a very fast robotics facility after that cybernetics core is done. We're not cutting Dragoons. Another real common thing in uh, any ProDOS opening is you never stop building Dragoons. Ever. Never, ever, 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 ever. And so, coming off this, a second gateway is added. Why? Well, if any of those damn attacks are coming, we want to make sure that we have a lot of Dragoons. So after the robotics facility is started, a second gateway is started. And we get observers right away. You can kind of see the two things that we're going for fast. A lot of Dragoons and observers. Cool. Pretty straightforward. Building uh, pylons as need be. All right, there's two gateways producing at the same time. God, so much easier to talk over a recording than it is to talk and play at the same time. Gameplay is so much smoother. And this is known as the super safe two-gate observer opening. And look at this. We're at about 4 minutes and 45 seconds into the game right now. And I have an observer that's about to pop out. I'm going to have 5 Dragoons, which is a great number of Dragoons. And I'm going to be able to start an expansion. If you are starting off in StarCraft, strongly recommend just doing this opening every single time. It's great. Notice that I'm still just making probes, still making Dragoons as best I can. And right around now, right around five minutes, you can see my money getting a little high. This is a prime time to do an expand. If we stop for a moment and say, well, what's next? There's two important answers. One of them is what are the things that we don't have that we really should have? And the second one is, well, what do I want to do? What if I scout him? He could be getting ready to attack me. He could be get, getting ready to expand twice. He could be going for a fast armory defensive play like Flash. He could be going for five factories and be aggressive like Fantasy. What? What's going to be my big choice at that point in time? I want to start with the very first question I asked. In this position, uh, and I'll even rewind a little bit in this video. In this position, as we see, we have a lot of Dragoons. I want you to tell me what's missing. What's missing in all of this? We have two gateways. We have Dragoons. We have observers coming out. We're going to be getting an expansion soon. Type it in the damn chat. Type it. Type it to me. Type it. Tell me. Uh, Sajuk Kor says no zealots. It's okay to not have zealots right now, but in terms of the mid game, that is a really important thing that we do want. Yeah, we'll eventually want a lot of zealots with leg speed. So, very important that we, at some point in our game plan, figure out how to slot that in. Uh, Alarazor says Reaver maybe. That's a great example of something that we don't, that we definitely don't need. There are openings that we're going to look at in a moment that will involve the Reaver play, but that's not one of those fundamentals. So I want to stress that that's not incorrect. It is possible in some openings to get a Reaver, but we don't want to always get a Reaver every single game. The big things that we are looking for are a shuttle with some Zealots in there to help us defend. And I'd say we're going to get that 70 or 80% of the time. We'll definitely want to be getting an observer into his base. We already built one observer for defense. We're going to want to get some more observers on the map. Great. We're going to eventually want to get Zell at leg speed. Great. The biggest thing of all, the number one thing missing that uh, I don't think anyone has mentioned right now. We don't have Dragoon range. We skipped out on Dragoon range in this opening. If we actually come back right to the very start and watch how this thing played out. This is how this build is able to get such a large number of production structures up. We don't have Dragoon range. And Avix, one of the legendary map makers in the community, says, oh, I assumed we get it. Yeah, a lot of people will assume you always get it because it's so modern. Um, pretty much everyone in modern gameplay, and we'll look at this in a moment, likes to get Dragoon range because of the fact that it allows you to use micro to solve your problems. It allows you to pick things off from afar, apply a little pressure because Dragoons with range outrange a bunker. Notice right now, we spent all of the gas 
just now on getting this robotic facility. You can barely see it. It's right there off the edge of the screen. Look at that. No gas for range. No gas for range. Dragoon's done. No gas for range. My god, we have no gas for range. No gas for range. No gas for range. And so... Um, I began with this opening because this is the most traditional I want to be so damn safe dude that I just want to have a lot of Dragoons fast, I don't want to have to micro I don't want to have to think I know Dragoon range is an important thing screw it I'm just going to get the Dragoons now and get the Dragoon range later some of the benefits to this build is that it holds off essentially 100% of early pressure yeah, jet lag, jet lag, <laughs> hit it on the nose. Yes, we still don't even quite have gas for range when we're past four minutes. Like you, you really delay it. Benefits of this opening are safe versus pretty much any early aggression that Terran could possibly throw at you. If Terran is doing one factory pressure, if Terran is doing two factory pressure, even if Terran's trying to do some weird funky stuff like rushing you with a bunch of Marines uh, as a surprise attack, you actually have a lot of Dragoons to be able to deal with this. And it gets a moderately fast expansion. Not a fast one, but it's moderately fast. The downsides are that we don't have any real way to apply any pressure to our opponent at all. We don't have Dragoon range to poke at things. We don't have um, a Reaver that's harassing. We don't have uh, Dark Templar that we're rushing in there with. We don't even have a shuttle to apply any pressure great. This is the penultimate safe, safe, safe opening. To transition on a little bit, we might say, well, is there a way to still be kind of safe, but maybe get Dragoon range a little earlier? And this is a much more modern way to play. Much more modern. Why? Because... Actually, this, this might be the most important thing I say today. Every now and again, I'm doing this show, and I'm just like, oh my god, that's going to cause so many losses unless I state it explicitly, okay? <laughs> um, we're going to look at an opening that's going to feel real good unless the Terran does something he's not supposed to do, okay? Let's take a look at this game real fast. I'm going to watch this at uh, close to 4x speed, and I'm going to talk about the details of it at a second go-through, but at this first go-through, I want to explain the concept of this build. Anytime we do some cute bullshit, like get Dark Templars or Reavers, we're delaying everything else good. Expansions, upgrades, unit count, gateway count. We're delaying everything else. So players said, hey, what if I just did normal units but did something kind of cute and clever with those normal units. This is this build. You get Dragoons with range very, very early. Your first expenditure is on a Dragoon and on Dragoon range. And then you see how I'm sending these Dragoons all the way out? Amazing! I can be annoying and apply pressure and boom, I expand behind it. This is really great because almost every Terran player who's doing a modern style is trying to get an expansion very quickly and defend it. So this applies some aggression to that early expansion, but we the Protoss still get ourselves quite a fast expansion to match. That's why this is very great as a modern opening versus other modern openings. But there's also other build orders like Terrans who go two factory pressure, Terrans who go three factory pressure, both on one base, Terrans who do nutty early medic marine nonsense against you, Terrans that early expand and then go for a bunch of marines. We're going to look at that in the cheese opening section. But with all of these, what the excellent pros have discovered is good micro can answer all of these. If you don't have good micro, you'll die. You'll just die, okay? You'll die, man. So, it's okay if you do this opening to say, get a second gateway when you expand, okay? That's not the ultra correct way to do it. I'm trying to give you a potential path of a solution should you encounter those problems. Now let's go ahead and look at this in a little bit more of slow motion. Although, um, 
many openings for Protoss are not that complex. There's not a lot of super nitty gritty stuff. Because basically, we never stop building probes. We never stop building pylons. We get our cybernetics core as fast as we can after our gateway is done. Gateway on 10 supply, cybernet or assimilator on 12 supply. These are very common numbers. And with our very first set of gas, we get a Dragoon. Now, we might ask ourselves the question, why the Dragoon first and not the range? Answer is very simple. When the big attacks come, it's just important that we have as many Dragoons as humanly possible. We will be able to solve problems with micro using Dragoon range, but getting Dragoon range 10 seconds earlier there's no big window of opportunity that that opens up. However, having four Dragoons when that attack arrives at your base versus three Dragoons and in 10 seconds one's coming, that's actually quite big. So we start the Dragoon right away and then bam, we're gonna start the range whenever we can afford it. It's very easy when you are playing Protoss to underestimate how much money you're going to spend on pylons and probes. You spend a shit load of money on pylons and probes. It's very easy to look at a time like right now and say, hey, I have 150, time to build a gateway. Don't go, you're not gonna have enough time to do that. You are literally not gonna have enough time to do that because you're gonna have to build another Dragoon and another pylon soon enough thereafter. So, as we are constantly building our probes, and constantly building away, right around the time when our third Dragoon is getting started, right after the third Dragoon, remember that, after the third Dragoon has started production, why the third Dragoon? Because there's one, there's one, and this one's building, and that's just about when you have enough money for it. You just toss down an expansion. Point. This is a nice, early, juicy expansion. Look at that. Four minutes it goes down. Bah. What is the Terran doing? Well, I have Dragoons with range that have been helping poke and pressure. You have the option to send out a probe earlier to get into his base and see what's going on. But in this position, let's ask ourselves some very important questions. What are we missing? What are we missing? Like, I asked this question before with the other opening. And I'm going to be asking this a lot today. What are things that we're missing? God, we don't have a robotics facility. So we need to get that started so we can get observers. Woo! We also need more gateways so we can get units out. We also need zealots with leg speed because that's important in the mid-game. Well, we can start to just list off all the stuff that we'll inevitably need way later in the game. And this can help inform us what we need right now. The number one thing that I'm going to be freaking out about is I don't have any observers. I, oh gosh, woo! You need lots of observers in this matchup and you need them fast. So I'm pretty confident in my micromanagement. I'm pretty sure that I could hold off stuff with just Dragoons. If you're not very confident, great time to build a second gateway. Your Dragoon or your observers will be a little bit later. So you won't really get to push back mines. You won't really get to see what he's doing as quickly, but it's okay, that's okay. This is a sacrifice you might make. Now notice I stated my wish to have an observ uh, a robotics facility, but I didn't get it super quickly. Now it started. It's, it got started off screen, but I'm going to come all the way back here to right before my expansion gets constructed. This is an important lesson for any opening you're doing that you don't screw yourself over by getting over eager and forgetting that probes, pylons, and units are the most important things. Four minutes, I start this expansion. I need a robotics facility. I need a robotics facility. I build a probe. I need a robotics facility. I, I need a robotics facility. We need pylons. I build a pylon. I need a robotics facility. I started building a Dragoon because we need to keep our units up. But I still need a robotics facility. I still need that. Oh man, still need that robotics facility. Okay. Okay, now I can afford it. About 30 seconds later, I can actually afford to make it. And it gets made off screen, but right down there. It's very easy to just start making all the structures that you feel like you need to make and forget the making of units, the making of probes, and the making of pylons. Very, very easy to do.
don't don't mess it up this is me pantomiming dragoon micro for what it's worth la, 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 la. still want to get those other gateways only just now will I have the ability to make those gateways okay um and after this yeah after we get the observers then it would be more gateways and then maybe oh just see what he's doing if he is building a lot of factories i would respond by building a lot of gateways a shuttle put zealots into that shuttle if he's not building a lot of gateways if he's just chilling on two bases with two factories i'll expand again seems good so we've just looked at these two very basic openings one is the two gate with observers and no range so that way we have muscle to expand this is we have micro to expand the one gate range expand and in fact pretty much all modern protosses like to go get the first dragoon get range and then do whatever because of how important range is so you can do little variations like dragoon with range then robotics facility then expand or dragoon with range then gateway then expand you can do all these sorts of things uh, let's go to another opening this opening i really like i love doing this opening with protoss just because i i love money i love money not not in the real world i don't have a lot of need for real world money i watch netflix i buy games on steam and this keeps my expenditures essentially negligible but in video games i want all the money yes oh my god i want the money man tell me about it this is a uh, nexus first build order um i recorded this a few times i hope this is the correct recording um but this is a um an opening that was popularized by Stork, a player that we've seen some games of. And I, I adore this because it gets you an expansion very, very quickly. And it tries to answer the question, how the hell do I hold off an early attack, right? If we are going for an early Nexus, going for a Nexus before Gateways, let's just make an obvious statement right now, but a very important statement. If we go Nexus first... What's going to be in the mid game? A reasonable number of gateways, zealots with legs, me expanding a lot, trying to tech to arbiters a lot, and preparing for a gateway explosion, depending on what the Terran's doing, right? This is where we want to go. We have other things like observers checking for stuff. Mm. Every mid game wants this. So if we go Nexus first, we know that eventually we will get gateways and eventually get a robo with observers and eventually get a uh, zealot legs and eventually get more expansions. We know that that's where we're going to. We always have to know where we're going to. So that way when we ask the question, okay, but in the immediate term, how the hell do I stay alive? How the hell do we stay alive? We make sure that we do something that aligns with that mid game. And in Terran versus Protoss, it always feels pretty obvious what you should be doing because it's, it's zealots and dragoons, man. Um, but <laughs> in the other matchups, it'll, it'll eventually be less clear. And having that mid-game plan is a beautiful guide. So in this build order, we actually build a Nexus on 12. This is an interesting um, specific examination of a build order for the opening Nexus first. We have to build this at 12 supply. I chose to show you this one as our third opening of the day because it demonstrates the sensitivity of exact timings with a build order. So we could say something like, oh, Sean told me to always go probes and pylons, so I'm never going to build this Nexus on 12 because I'm doing nonstop probe production. Interestingly, this doesn't work. You die to early pressure otherwise. We're going to see some really cool ways in which the refinement of the specifics of a build order will permit you to do something like this that lets you be safe. So here, 14 gateway, very exact timing. 15 assimilator, very exact timing. And then we are going to be getting a cybernetics core immediately. I'm just clicking here checking things there's a cybernetics core this is a zealot getting built why because we know that we want lots of dragoons due to the cybernetics core 
but it's going to take some time to build. So even though Zealots are not that great early game, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing, right? May as well just get it. Zealots actually deal quite a lot of damage to Marines, so it has some nice purposes in case Marines come in. Um, but notice something. Ooh, we're supply blocked at 17, aren't we? Isn't that bad? Well... We get a second gateway right now. Ooh, we're supply blocked. Isn't that bad? Well, no, because our Nexus finishes, and our Nexus gives us the supply that we need to continue to make probes. I mean, I'm getting this here because this pylon is actually important to get right after your Nexus finishes, but isn't that a nice timing? We see now why the specific 12 Nexus timing aligns well with the specific 14 gateway timing. Because now, as my Zealot's almost done, I'm building probes at all these various locations. I'm waiting for my robotics facility, to, or my Cybernetics Corps to finish. There it finishes. Can't quite start that Dragoon exactly on time, but now I have two gateways producing. What are some important things that we're missing now? We don't have a Robo. We don't have Dragoon range, so we can't apply any pressure. What makes this feel okay? We have two Nexuses. Remember in the one gate expand example, our Nexus was started at four minutes. We have our Nexus done, and it's not even four minutes. This is why I like this build order, because I don't like applying pressure, man. I like bases. Give me the money, man! Oh yeah, that's right. I, <laughs> I actually paused the game just to point at how fast things were coming down the pipeline. So in this game, here's an interesting question. With this particular opening, right? Let's come back to this location. Let's come back to here. Look at our money. We're getting to the point where we could make a choice. Should I get a robotics facility first? Or should I get Dragoon range first? Think for a moment. Think what your answer would be. I'm going to answer it in a second because, you know, I don't want to wait for chat to catch up. Don't need the delay. The correct answer uh, is almost always going to be getting that ro robo up because you really need the observers in order to get the mines. Why would I want Dragoon range to be able to pressure or to be able to use micro to defend an attack? We're already going to have a late Dragoon range because of our build, so it's not clear that we'd be able to apply any pressure because we'd be coming so late. Do we need Dragoon range to defend? No, we have a shitload of units to defend. We don't, we don't need to solve it twice. We don't need to solve it twice. Uh, this opening will struggle a little bit against um, very aggressive factory openings, very aggressive two factory openings, just due to the fact that um, your unit count is a little low. However, use probes to defend, and because Dragoons are coming out two at a time, that helps quite a bit. Dragoon range, um, yeah, no, I would just strongly recommend getting the Robo Facility, because we get the Observers, so that lets us detect mines, it lets us see what our opponent is doing, so we can make big choices like expanding and stuff like that. Generally, if you're skipping range to do something, probably going to want to be getting the Observers before you're getting the range. Um... I'm going to show another opening that is a little relevant for the video that we're going to see after this. The video we're going to see after this is going to be the Terran vs. Protoss cheese. We're going to do both sides of the cheese because there's just not that much cheese in this matchup. This opening is going to be a Dark Templar opening. We still want to make sure that we get a base, that we don't die, that we maybe pressure him but make sure that you know, we can get our, our good old steam going. Um, this opening is going to have some characteristics of tech-focused openings for Protoss that we're also going to see in our next video, or, or in our next opening, which is a Reaver-based opening. We still, I'm sending out a scout probe here. This is just a, you know, pantomime realism a little bit but when this 
gateway is done, I make a cybernetics core. But there's a very important piece to the puzzle that we build. You may not have seen it because I tried to hit the space bar on top of it, but I didn't have the window selected properly. Right here. Ha ha! Look at that, the exact frame. We build a zealot right now. Why? We're going to spend all of our gas getting Dark Templar as fast as possible. So better to have a zealot than literally no units. We can't afford dragoons because they take gas. So here you see zealot coming on out. Excelente. I'm going to build my pylon. I'm cutting a probe here to ensure that I'm building this pylon on six. Excuse me, this pylon on 16. Here comes Mr. Zealot. Here he comes. Ah, yes, there it is. See the Cybernetics Core finished? Instant Citadel of a Dune to rush for Dark Templar. And I'm instantly going to get some Dragoons up. Great. How do we defend against someone who's pressuring us early? We have Dark Templar, dude. We have Dark Templar. Ah, oh, man, I missed it again. Alt, left. So with these types of openings where you're doing something tech-focused, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a second Dragoon. This is kind of what I mean about really understanding how to manage your economy. I build this Dragoon here, but you'll see the Citadel of a Dune finishes, so I have to go back and cancel that Dragoon. I did that just to demonstrate that you don't quite have enough money to get this Templar Archives down. Once it's down, then you can start your subsequent Dragoonies. Now, upon doing this opening, I kind of think I don't even need that second Dragoon. I could have just expanded right now, because my Dark Templar are going to be started in just a moment. So there's my expansion, and soon enough, ugh, I can make this DT. Look at the time. We're just after four minutes again to be able to start this expansion. So our expansion is pretty quick. And we have this benefit that Dark Templar will be able to maybe, <laughs> well, if you're playing at a new player's level, you'll maybe just end the game immediately with the Dark Templar. You might just, you just have, might have no preparation. A lot of early aggression builds focus on getting vultures with mines as the only way to deal with DTs. And the Academy and the Engineering Bay are very delayed. And so those attacks, maybe they'll put mines in their main base and you won't be able to win the game. But back home, they definitely won't have enough for scans. So they won't be able to push on in. So this is an example of another opening. What, what, what's good about this opening? Well, if there are maps that have, you know, multiple entrances to the main and natural, there's some maps that have, like, funky little backdoor entrances. Going for a very fast Dark Templar can often be very difficult to uh, deal with. For instance, the map Gold Rush, the current ASL4 map. This map has eggs, like literally neutral Zerg eggs defending a second entrance to the main base. Dark Templar rushes can knock the eggs down very quickly. So, that is a That is a potential opening right there. Um, so, on maps like that, you can wind up taking advantage and exploiting players. Yes, I do want to open StarCraft. You can wind up exploiting players that don't have the ability to defend themselves from any positions at once. Single player. Go. Expansion. Boom. We're going to load a replay for our next one, which is going to be a Reaver-focused opening. Reaver-focused opening that hopefully you remember. Ooh. And so this Reaver based, or excuse me, this Dark Templar based opening is a little cute, but I actually don't think it's terribly effective, especially as you climb up. You get a lot of free wins, but let's think about what we don't have with a Dark Templar opening. We don't even have a robotics facility started. We don't have a lot of units. We don't have Dragoon range. In the right now, eh, we're looking a little, eh, right? We don't really, we don't really have a lot of tools to stay alive, but. What's very nice about Dark Templar opening is that you've already built your Citadel of a Dune for Zealot Legs, and you've already built the Templar Archives, which is needed for Arbiter tech. 
So you've taken care of some of those things early on, which is a nice stepping stone for the future. It's just kind of in the now that things get a little dicey with those uh, openings. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of them. This game is going to be uh, yet another opening that we're going to look at, opening number five. You're going to see its similarities to the Dark Templar Rush opening that I said before. This is Stork. This is from Stork vs. Fantasy in the uh, Incruet OSL Finals in 2008. And we have a clock up here. I wish the clock was down there purely because I'm unbelievably lazy. What, you expect me to look at one of two places, Blizzard? Oh my god, my bones hurt. Oof, ow. So, we're going to see kind of the same stuff. But let's think about what this opening does let us do and doesn't let us do. So we see the gateway at 10 supply, the assimilator at 12 supply, very common follow-ups. We see a cybernetics core following it right on up, but what do you know? A zealot's getting produced. Ah. What Terran's doing doesn't really matter that much because this is how almost every Terran player will look at the start of the game. Oh, look at that. A pylon on 16, halting probe production to be able to get this pylon right after this zealot. Why is that? Well, in our last game, we saw that we didn't build a Dragoon because we wanted to instantly spend all of this money plopping down a Citadel of a Dune. In this spot, we're going for a Reaver opening, so look at how the money lines up just nice. The Cybernetics Core is just finished a few moments ago, and we have enough to start the fastest possible Reaver due to the fastest possible robotics facility. Let me let me not be so hyperbolic. This isn't literally the fastest possible reaver. This is the fastest reasonable reaver timing. As in, like, you know, we have some stuff at the front that's blocking SCVs from scouting very critically. Um, we're still getting probes in a Dragoon to ensure that we have a mid-game very reasonably. And given the fact that, um... <laughs> you, guys, you guys have seen me lose to the computer AI when I'm trying to show a build order and a bunch of zealots just march in and fucking kill me, right? You've seen that. This is not a game where Stork is against the AI. He's actually against a real, breathing, living Protoss. Or, excuse me, a real, <laughs> breathing, living Terran player. So we're going to get to see how things flow into the mid-game just a little bit here. But the important bits of this are going to wrap up uh, in the next minute or two, just for the purposes of an opening. So, the Reaver doesn't get started right away. A shuttle is the first thing to be started with Reaver-based openings. And when this is halfway done, a robotics support bay gets started to allow Reaver production. I want you to note what time it is. It's four minutes, a little after four minutes into the game. In our game, where we went Nexus first, the Nexus was already done. In our game, where we went for one gateway with Dragoons and range, our Nexus had started. In our Dark Templar Rush game, our Nexus is getting ready to start in just a moment. And in our two gateway ultra safe expand build, Five minutes was about when this started. The Reaver is just now starting. And look at how broke Stork is. In other words, one of the biggest signals as to what the hell the Protoss is capable of doing is just when his expansion timing is going down. If it's five minutes and he hasn't expanded yet, you know something's up, man. You know something's up. So, what do we see Protoss do right away? Observatory. Not Dragoon Range. Observatory. What's he missing? What's he missing? Biggest thing Protoss is missing right now is this base. Can't believe he's missing this base. There's the Reaver popping out. Loading up with two Zealots. Here's the expansion going down. These Reavers represent how little safety... Stork has with his ground army. They're staying on the high ground, blocking the ramp, not even on the low ground to get any extra advantage. 
because the first observer is only just now coming out. What does Stork see? A factory is almost done. He doesn't really see that much. But this is a really fun opening. We're actually going to keep this time in mind 530. So that way we can just kind of look at how this opening winds up functioning. Sometimes Terran won't even have these turrets up. If we take a look at what Fantasy actually has, he literally just has a base, these units, and he's building turrets. He rushed for turrets. He rushed for them. Why? Because he didn't see an expansion, dude. He didn't see an expansion. He's, he's a little concerned. Maybe Dark Templar Reavers are coming. Boom. So this is actually everything Terran has, bolstered by this missile turret. So sometimes you can just end the game right now. You can just immediately end the game. And this is much more reliable than a Dark Templar. If a Dark Templar were to march its way up here, well, there's, oh shit, there's a missile turret. It's right, it's right there, man. He's just gonna, he's just gonna shoot it down and it's gonna be game over. But with Reavers, you have more ability to kill off enemy units, do harassment stuffs like this. This is, this is really bad in a moment. <laughs> he just, he shoots to kill. It's bad. Okay, this is, this is, this is a little painful. So don't, don't worry, don't worry about that, right? You just, you lift the reaver up and you don't, you don't worry about it. You can do harassment things, and you can end the game immediately with a Reaver. I just want to take a look at what's going to be happening back home in Stork's base, so we can start answering questions about how does this flow into the mid-game. What does he need now? Well, he needs Dragoon range. That's going to be a big expenditure of his in the near future. He accidentally loses the Reaver right now, and any time you lose the Reaver, you think, oh, God, I might lose the game now. So you have to build another Reaver for defense, and then he winds up starting the robotics facility, what else do we think is missing? Well, probably some zealots with leg speed, some more gateways, and some more dragoons. Pretty common to increase gateway count before getting zealots with leg speed. He's just using dragoons and reavers to hold all this off. More gateways. This is really common, right? This is a really common thing to do. He sees that fantasy is being very aggressive and is attacking a lot, so he ups his gateway count. And we have a pretty normal looking eventual mid game for Protoss. Last thing he's missing in his mid game is expansion and zealot legs. That's it. Um, thanks to the fact that uh, OGN and Kespa so kindly provided these replays, um, we get the chance to look at one last, a sixth, a bonus. I didn't even think about doing this one initially, but given the fact that I'm in possession of it, May as well show you. This is another opening that is sort of a variant of the other ones that we've taken a look at. This is going to be a Dark Templar drop opening. So let's remember the five that we've done so far. We've looked at Ultra Safe, Two Gate Dragoon with Fast Observers to defend against everything with lots of muscle. Get out of here, Fantasy. We've looked at a One Gate Fast Range Expand, a very modern style that uses Micro and Dragoon Range to stay alive to get a pretty fast expansion up. We've looked at a Nexus First opening, an opening that I really like to do because I'm a little cheesy and I like to play non-standard macro heavy games in every single matchup when I'm off racing. Um, we've looked at the DT Rush opening and how important it is to get that fast expand up afterwards. And we saw some deficiencies in there where if we go for such a fast, um, uh, where we go for such a fast Dark Templar that we don't really have any of our other early game tools like Observers, like Dragoon Range, like Gateway Count. We've looked at this Reaver opening from Stork that allows us to apply pressure, maybe win, hold off a lot of early uh, pressure. But the expansion was quite late, and all the other things were quite late. In this game, we're going to see a Dark Templar drop, which I want to stress, it's a little less of a ultra-specific build order, and a little bit more of something that is conceptually sound. There's lots of ways to do this opening. I personally really don't like doing this opening as uh, Protoss, just because good Terran players 
thwomp me with it. We see the super cool zealot before the uh, cybernetic score is done. But instead of going straight for any sort of cutesy tech build, instead of building anything like a robotics facility or a citadel, we actually see Stork just builds a Dragoon to apply a little pressure. Why? Well, you just can't wall this off with a Zealot and a um, Probe. If you wanted to do a Dark Templar drop rush build, you could skip this Dragoon. That's okay. You could get your, uh, you know, build order stuff started earlier, but opening up with range and dragoons like a super safety guy. Apply a little pressure. Nice. Again, you can do a super cut all the units opening, or excuse me, you can do a super cut all the units build order, but this particular opening can be done in a variety of ways. So, do 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 do. After Stork ensures that there's nothing else going on, he does something super duper sneaky. He gets the robo facility in his main, and he builds the Citadel of a Dune back here. Starting this robo facility and the Citadel at the same time is just winds up lining things up nicely. And then you can start the Templar archives and the shuttle and the gateway at the same time. Come on, come on, build it. And then he comes over here and he builds it. No, he doesn't do it yet. Comes over here and he builds it. Oh, 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 I'm an idiot. He built it in the main base. Okay, I was wondering, I was like, holy shit, are my notes lying to me? <laughs> I forgot he built the Templar archives in his main base. Okay, okay, hold on, let me, let me, try, this, let me try this again. Okay, if you build the Robo Facility and the Citadel of a Dune at the same time, you have a nice timing where when those are done, you can start the Templar Archives, this second gateway, and this shuttle at the same time. Ooh, okay, there we go. There's the shuttle getting built. Oh, okay. All right, whew. So then we build these two Dark Templar. And you can see that the shuttle and the two DTs are gonna come out at close to the same time. What's something that we're noticing here about all the rest of our stuffs? Well, with the Dark Templar drop build, we're getting an observatory and a robo facility. We already have Dragoon range and a pretty damn good Dragoon count. The one thing that we're missing is actually the most important thing, which is the expansion. Pretty much benchmark the success of all of your gameplay by how quickly, efficiently, and successfully you can take and defend expansions. But notice how late this is. Six minutes and 35 seconds. Oh, damn. And of course, Terran, uh, if you watch the analysis that we did of this series, Terran has actually seen this and has seen like, oh, man, you don't have an expansion yet. Something's up. The purpose of the uh, expand uh, of this opening is that you have these DTs here to basically guarantee defense of most attacks, and you're going to try to deal a lot of damage with these Dark Templar, however you can. Certainly, killing off turrets to deny vision is one way, but again, kill anything that you can. This is some cute micro where he detonates the mines without actually taking any damage because he loads up during the animation frame that the mine is exploding, but before it is dealt damage. Just doing whatever damage can be done. Tons of mines placed, tons of extra resources spent on turrets and the like. Forced academy at this point in time. Cool. And just to close out this Terran vs. Protoss opening episode, I want to look at what it is that Stork does next so we can see again a unusual build order. Not an uncommon, not a never done build order, but just a little bit unusual these days. He gets his gateways up. Up here. We're going to keep the Citadel of a Dune selected. He's just continually building Dragoons. Continually building observers, adding in more gateways. 
And one of the last things he gets is Zealot Leg Speed. So much gas was spent getting these Dark Templar, getting all these tech things up. Another expansion is being constructed up here. It's very common for Zealot Leg Speed to drag behind everything else. And because Fantasy is crazy, ridiculously aggressive, he just does lots of attacking. When does this get started? Yeah, look at that. Finally rounding it out. To the common mid-game! Lots of gateways. Multiple bases. Wishing to go up to more. Dragoons have range. Zealots are now getting legs. And observers are in large numbers to spot absolutely everything that's going on. Love it. Love it! So to recap what we got the chance to look at today, we got the chance to look at six different openings that Protosses can use against Terran players that both defend against pressure, get an early expansion, and ideally can maybe put a little pressure back on the opponent. Go ahead and exit StarCraft. And I hope that this gives you some ideas for one that you might pick to focus on working on a lot. If your micro is something that you really enjoy doing, that you feel comfortable relying on, maybe try that reaver-focused opening. If you're someone who's more interested in macro-based play, maybe focus on that two-gate observer expand build that's very safe so you can just get a lot of units up. Maybe if you... Well, i got to be honest with you. If you think Bisu is cool, you want to do a Dark Templar opening. Go for it, man. Go for it. The DTs make you happy. Do it, but make sure that you are having the economic follow-up where you are getting an expansion. Do not get too overexcited by free wins because eventually opponents will be able to micro appropriately against Reavers. And eventually opponents will be able to build detection in time against Dark Templars. Focus on the expanding aspect to get to the mid-game and you're going to be in good shape. Now stay here, because we have one next episode coming up. We're going to look at Terran vs. Protoss cheese. Because cheese openings are going to define what we can and cannot do, because he might just outright kill us. We're going to take a look at a few builds. Let me just go here. Stay tuned. It's going to be TVP cheese once I get this set up. Setting things up.